Glad you could join us. Now, in our first story, President Ekufado has pledged the support of his government and party to fully ensure compliance with the roadmap towards the implementation of the Vigilantism and Other Related Offences Act. As he pays tribute to the outgoing Professor Emmanuel Asante, um, led the, who led the governing board of the National Peace Council. Now, the four-year mandate came to an end in August, and last night, a newly constituted 14-member board was inducted into office, chaired by Reverend Dr. Ernest Edu Jemfi of the Christian Council. Ahead of the election, the various political parties, particularly the governing MPP and the opposition NDC, are expected to conform to the roadmap and code of conduct to guarantee an incident-free election. President Ikufa says he remains committed to the content of the law. A haven of peace and security on the continent and in the world. Indeed, one such is the role played by the board during and in the aftermath of the passage of the Vigilantism and Related Offenses Act of 2019, Act 999, which I initiated. The board provided the platform for dialogue towards the preparation and adoption of two important documents, that is the roadmap and code of conduct for eradicating vigilantism in Ghana, documents which have been endorsed by the major political parties in the country. In furtherance of this, the Council has also inaugurated a National Monitoring Committee to oversee the implementation of the roadmap and the code of conduct, ensuring that all political parties and other relevant stakeholders achieve the set goals and objectives of these documents. The advocacy work undertaken by the Council with the support of government has helped to bring even more awareness on the menace of political vigilantism and the need to eradicate it. So on behalf of government and the Ghanaian people, I express our appreciation to Reverend Emmanuel Asante and the outgoing 13-member board, and I wish them Godspeed and the very best of luck in their future endeavors. With barely a month to go for the conduct of the December presidential and parliamentary elections, the inauguration of the new board is timely. As contained in the act that established the council, its mandate, amongst others, is to facilitate and develop mechanisms for conflict prevention, management and resolution, and to help build sustainable peace in the country. The Act also provides for a four-year tenure of office for the Board and demands that members of the governing Board be drawn from various religious groupings, national houses of chiefs, and other identifiable bodies. Thus, the membership of the new Board is as follows. The Reverend Paul the Reverend Professor Paul Frimpong Manso, Nana SKB Asante, Al Haji Mauvi Mohammed bin Sali, the Reverend Father Emmanuel Fianu, Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams, Reverend Dr. Ernest Edujemfi, Numu Blafu Akutia Umachu III, Nana Ejukuma Dufie II Mampohima, Right Reverend Colonel John Kwamna Utu, retired, Sheikh Almiyao Shaibu, Sheikh Salman Mohammed Al Hassan, Mrs. Joanna Ajua Opari, and Mrs. Magdalene Kanai. The National Peace Council has become a point of reference for addressing various conflict situations in Ghana. That's all live on Joy News today. Now, the president is meanwhile observing Remembrance Day, commemorating the anniversary of the armistice, which marked the end of World War I. Today, it is observed by all nations of the Commonwealth. Presidential correspondent Elton Broby joins us on the line for an update. Now, Elton, how did the president observe the day? So basically, just, just as it's happening across the world, 
President Akufuado was at the Osusaba to lay a, brief, a, a reef on behalf of government to mark the Amistad Day, uh, which, you know, uh, was an amistad between the Allies and Germany at, at exactly 11 a.m. on 11th November 1918, the 11th hour with the 11th day of the 11th month. So this has become custom with Commonwealth nations. He was at Osu Cemetery to lay a brief uh, on behalf of government to mark the end of the First World War, uh, Daniel. Now, uh, we understand the president has a tall list of activities for the day. Uh, run us through a few of them. Well, it does appear that he's trying to, you know, uh, clear the decks of outstanding engagement before uh, he zoomed uh, into the electioneering campaign for I'm told that this weekend, hopefully, uh, he will be on the ground to canvass for votes uh, for his second term re-election. So, uh, as per what we have today, uh, there are some ambassadors who have been assigned uh, to start their duty tour in Ghana. They are expected to present their latest of credence to the president. He will also be meeting with some traditional authorities, and just like it's become custom with some of these meetings, the traditional authority always have one concern or the other that they want government to tackle, and government will, will in return, uh, you know, assure them of, you know, leave it up to the expectations of them. So we have the Shama traditional authority and the Pulima traditional council all coming to meet the president between 2 and 3 p.m. And for those of you who are interested in football, the executives of Kumasi Asante Kora also pay a courtesy call on the president at exactly 5 p.m. Daniel. Thank you very much, Elton John Brobe, um, for bringing us those updates. Let's go to the camp of the NDC. Um, but before that, earlier, my colleague, Bernice Abubedu Lansa, spoke with the new chairman of the Peace Council, Reverend Dr. Ernest Edu Jenfi. Thank you very much, uh, um, and uh, for the felicitations. We're grateful to God for the opportunity to serve our country at this time of, of, of the history of this country. We don't have enough time uh, because the election is so close. Uh, currently, the uh, new board is meeting this morning, and we will be assessing the report that you've just uh, spoken about from the north. We will look at the issues that are involved and also we'll be strategizing for the uh, election that is ahead of us. We haven't had reports on activities of vigilantes per se, but we've seen violence on peace walks and you know other incidents between the two main political parties. What is your strategy going into the elections in making sure we don't see uh, repetitions of these? Well, we still want to appeal to the political parties who signed this document uh, to do the best they can to adhere to what they've signed to. Um, if we sign a document and we don't stick to it and begin to move around and do our own thing, it doesn't help. And most people will turn back to the Peace Council to ask us, what can you do? I think that the political parties will have to express goodwill in terms of what they've signed to and do the best they can uh, to do these things. Uh, currently, we have uh, set up uh, several mediating committees around the country, about 16 of them in all the regions. And our goal is that wherever there are grievances, these reports will be picked up. The mediating teams will deal with these things and make sure that there is peace wherever uh, we are. Mistrust is at the heart of many election violence cases reported across the world and even in our sub-region. We've had political actors and even presidential candidates come out to speak about the posture of the Electoral Commission and how they feel about certain things being done. Well, I think that in the first place, uh, the parties must make use of the IPAC, which is the, the body that helps to mediate some of these things. And uh, I hope that the decisions that are taken at IPAC will be adhered to by all the political players. Sometimes it's interesting to note that in this field, the politicians can come to a meeting, sign to a document, agree to certain things, and as soon as they walk out of the meeting, they hold another press. <laughs> Let's
has hit the campaign trail and NDC flag bearer John Dramani Mahama is currently interacting with some Zongo chiefs and imams in the Ashanti regional capital, Kumase. Sadiana near Kase Namin and Patbim Hello Sadiana near Kase O Sapati Minana Okahubi and Ame Papanso Ewoho and T. Hey Felix, check your audio. Hey Zu. Former President John Romani Mahama, they are addressed in the gathering in the Ashanti region. We'll reconnect with that feed when um, he resumes speaking. But my colleague Maxwell Agbagba is, is with his entourage. Maxwell, we know you are yet to get to the regional capital, but tell us, what does the itinerary look like today? Well, so um, for today, um, this is the first place the former president and the presidential candidate of the NDC will be visiting where at the Aboshi Zongo School Park, where um, hundreds of NDC supporters um, have gathered and are listening um, to the um, former president at the um, addresses them. Um, earlier today, though, at the Golden Tulip Hotel, um, we saw um, the uh, former first lady and wife of the NDC presidential candidate, Lodina Mahama. Um, she was there at the hotel, um, and there she interacted with supporters of the NDC. Well, um, a lot of them were very excited um, to see her back on the campaign trail. Some of them we spoke to said um, there were quite a lot of conspiracy theories about her absence on the campaign trail, and they are excited to see her back. Many of them took the opportunity to take pictures and all of that, you know, with her. But just some minutes ago, we are learning that she was actually in the Puno East region um, to campaign for the um, NDC. So um, she's heading back to Accra, but decided to pass um, by um, stop at Kumasi and say hello to um, her husband, um, the right. former president, right. and the NDC presidential candidate. Right. So move it uh, to Accra, Daniel. Right. Thanks, Max. Well, let's now take you back to the former president, John Mahama, as he addresses the gathering. Almost on bed, on bed, some no more yet. Ever seen the Moshizongo bridge no sign at ye. Now, when you say a end this in a baby, a baby, yes, a bridge now, mama. Is you as a M. Say, Sergin Zongo Casano. Well, mama, you my emre. If you say no, my eye or hey, na, Wabuboso. Na, near a walk a crowd or maono. Say, oh, yes, yeah, over my near chance, sir. Yane Nana Asante in your two four. Yes, sir, say, and yes, you. I was there. Ye pay ya, Menchia Polyclinic, no. Nay, ya no hospital prep. And yet, two more, no more. Ya young cratano, ya drawings be be a editor. And so, yan to me, I shall say, and you free a bay moon. And to a idea, ya bar. Sam and Shapoli Clinic, Rebe Pijano, now your hospital precon, Senebea, Yapomo de Betumpo. Ezu Eza, and your mamma wedding, and your Biana Beckabium. Yen na Yashe, a brabo, and yes, it's now. Yen him say, Yer Tinka, a watchery. Any a bread at a tree. Nasa Oje, Ghana Hedina, Yakas a center of business, any Kumasi, a honey Dija, a Hana business people war. Nasa, a no man Koya, Omo Mutin affairs, any Kumasi for Ezu Omo Mutin affairs, any Kumasi for. And he said, Economy Nancy call a car, your diabetes to your soul. 
I economy no ko ye. Kumasi for anything cafes. If you say oh got now we shop. Fiji no park up in me yumre. Na ni omu ye ane se see and pass, see and pass. Ye beche ni a sing, ye beche ni a sing. We bet you nothing from an opa cut people you may. We be on touch it. Ezu, no one who say economy no. Eh ya, I cut ditch. Ezu, now from so a different kind of government here. Banks no mugu here no. And no ne omu from so a omu from so a different. If you say ni pa get re e wo banks no mu. Ni pa si kaka kra e ne wo banks no mu. O ba ya wa be get banks in jina. Um, make sure that you are doing that. And this is a bad thing. You bet you are. And I'm just saying, oh, any year, you just see, you bet you are moka. You move the money. Ezu. You must say, you are not going to get sick. Ezu. You're live on Joy News today. Let's leave the campaign trail and the coalition of civil society organizations working in the extractives, anti-corruption and good governance are calling for investigation and prosecution of officials who may have been found to have breached any laws in the Ejapa royalties deal. According to Dr. Steve Mantea, who spoke on behalf of the CSOs, the deal is completely defective and beyond repairs. Bismarck. Kweku Asante is at the news conference and joins us with more. Kweku, why is the coalition saying that the deal is so defective it cannot be remedied, hence must be abrogated in its entirety? Well, Daniel, according to the coalition who have been against this deal from the start, they've been making some points that if you look at the deal, this deal effectively mortgages uh, royalties future for a long time. And so the president's idea that such a deal must go back to parliament, especially by virtue of the special prosecutor's findings of some apparent conflict of interest, among other things, it is their firm belief that this deal must be completely abrogated, it must be thrown away, and not something that we must be countenancing by sending it back to parliament. And so they are saying, for instance, that the MPP majority in parliament did not do a good job, because as we all know, the NDC minority walked out from the consideration of the bill, which was actually done under a certificate of, urgent, a certificate of urgency done within 24 hours. And so they think that this deal is defective in all levels and as such must be thrown out and not sent back to parliament again, Daniel. Now, Bismarck, we know that the civil society organizations have taken issue with the finance minister's response to the OSP's risk assessments that you referred to. Uh, what have they been saying? Well, so one interesting thing, there have been calls by some sections of the society, including the National Democratic Congress, for the dismissal of the finance minister. The NEC says they do not agree that the finance minister must be sat until a court of competent jurisdiction actually says that he is culpable or he has some criminal charges to face. And so they do not support that. But the special prosecutor made some findings which, in their perspectives, do not correlate with the response of the finance minister to the president. You will recall uh, that the finance minister actually sent a memo to the president actually disagreeing with almost all the aspects of the, uh, the, the, the special prosecutor's report. And so he thought that he had been acting in good faith all throughout the transaction. That's a quote from the response or the memo that was sent by the finance minister to the president. But according to the civil society organization, if you look at some of the things that went on in the deal, for instance, this, the, the, the Imara, which is a South African company, which the special prosecutor said is a decoy for, a, uh, for, for data banking, Ghana, which belongs to the finance minister. They believe that these are apparent conflict of interest issues that the finance minister cannot claim to have acted in good faith all throughout. And so they, they've been taking issue with some of those responses. And although they disagree with calls for his dismissal, they do not think that his response that he has acted in good faith all throughout right. is true. Mm. Thank you very much, Bismarck Kwekwasante, for joining us this afternoon with those updates. Away from arrival live, the Black Volta that passes through Bupe in the Savannah region is under heavy pollution. The pollution is choking nature's life 
and threaten the livelihood of hundreds of local fishermen. Some of them are forced to find other options because the number of fish caught per day is rapidly decreasing, contrary to the past where many canoes paddled on the lake. One or two are now having trouble all day for little fish. Joy News' Mahmoud Mohamed Nuruddin visits Pupi and explains why the situation is worrying. Andrew has been fishing since childhood, but recent decline in catch is a cause for concern. Every Monday is a market day and Andrew could get about 2,000 cities in a month, but then things started to change. In the past, I used to get every market day at least five million. But for now, this thing over here, it, it can't reach even uh, uh, three million. I have a wife and kids. So if I didn't get this uh, market day, this market day, I didn't get that there's a problem. The children will not get food, my wife too, and myself. <laughs> So I uh, need to have to force and get the one that you eat. Ibrahim Mohammed just got back from fishing down the river. One of his customers, Unisekwe, is already waiting at the bank, but there was no good fishing for Ibrahim. <laughs> In the past, we get more fish and we make a lot of money, but now the story has changed and we earn little such that we cannot afford our daily meals. First, they were able to get more fish and we buy from them. But now it is difficult for them. First, I come in to me, see, I'm not crying. Po, hmm. They say the quarter. The black vulture has provided livelihoods to hundreds of people who live along it, but the growth of algae and presence of plastic waste prove that it suffers from bad human influence. In recent months, water levels have not only declined, they have also changed from crystalline to multicolored. Household pollution continues to threaten the life of this water, which has sustained hundreds of lives for years. Open defecation along the banks is common because residents say there is no public place of convenience for them. They defecate around. Strangers who don't find toilet facilities also defecate along the bank of the river. All the plastic waste that they throw into the river is a major concern. I mean, it is not good for us. Now, the board of the Hotijin Hospital has hinted at developing a policy framework towards harnessing the potentials of the facility and developing it to meet international standards. The board chairman, Dr. Felix Anya, believes this would enable the hospital to acquire international accreditation to attract clients globally, 
hence becoming a health and medical tourism center. Speaking to Joy News after a familiarization tour of the whole teaching hospital, he expressed optimism that this vision when achieved would contribute to the country's foreign exchange and promote the growth of the economy. A 300-bed facility was commissioned in December 2000 to serve as the Volta Regional Hospital. The facility was recommissioned as the Hotishan Hospital in 2018 to serve as a practical center for health students, provide standard health care, among others. Nonetheless, the task to ensure the facility achieves its objectives rests on the shoulders of the governing board, chaired by Dr. Felix Anya, a former acting CEO of the Kolibutishan Hospital and director of the Holy Trinity Medical Center, Accra, and Holy Trinity Spa and Health Farm, Sugakope. Dr. Anya, who also served as the board chairman of the Health Facilities and Regulatory Agency from 2015 to 2016, believes the facility is strategically positioned and has the potential to be transformed into a center for health and medical tourism. He indicated that the board seeks to develop the Hotation Hospital to suit international standards to enable it to attract clients from the West African sub-region. Unfortunately, if you look at most of the on the net, you don't really see health and medical tourism being reflected nationally. And it's been like that for some time, but I hope this will change. The position is huge and sad, but then it is the how to do it that has been the issue. And I believe that this position, I've been passionate about this from 2006, and I've, and I've been sure that this is the time being in the position to direct, uh, to propose this as a policy framework, which should not be difficult. Now, the Food Sovereignty Platform says President Nana Adodankwa Ekufado will be demonstrating that he does not have the interest of Ghanaian farmers at heart. Um, Daryl Carr will give us more details of this when he joins us with business here on Join News Today. Stay with us. <music> Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to business. My name is Daryl Kwa. The Food Sovereignty Platform says President Ekufado will be demonstrating that he does not have the interests of Ghanaian farmers at heart if he ascends to the Plant Variety Protection Bill passed by Parliament at a press conference at Bogatanga in the Upper East Region. The platform said the bill is very hostile to the ordinary Ghanaian farmer. Correspondent Albert Sori has more. The Food Sovereignty Platform is made up of the Agricultural Workers' Union, the Peasant Farmers' Association of Ghana, the Centre for Indigenous Knowledge and Organisational Development, the Ghana Agroecology Movement, and the Vegetarians' Association of Ghana, the Ghana Muslim Mission, Food Sovereignty Ghana, and the Rastafarian Council of Ghana are also member associations of the Food Sovereignty Platform which seeks to promote sustainable systems of farming that produce healthy food. At a press conference in Bolgatanga, the Food Sovereignty Platform said the Plant Variety Protection Bill passed by Parliament amounts to betrayal of Ghanaians by key government institutions. National President of the Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana, Abdul Rahman Mohammed, addressed the press conference. It has come to the attention of the Food Sovereignty Platform that Parliament has read the Plant Variety Protection Bill, formally referred to as, to as Plant Breeders Bill 2020 for the third time and has subsequently passed it. In June this year, and after broader consultation, we 
we formally wrote to the office of the president, the speaker of parliament and the register general department officially, stating our position on the bill and gave five key reasons why the bill is not in the best interest of the country. This includes the bill is hostile to small farmers in particularly and farmers generally. It does not allow farmers to sell and exchange seeds from so-called protected varieties that it is heavily tackled in favor of commercial breeders and undermines farmers' rights. He said the bill, if assented to by the president, will undermine Ghana's biodiversity and food sovereignty. Now, Finance Minister Ken Ofoyata has said that the 70 billion CD Obatampa program launched by government will go Ghana's private sector bar by peers in the sub region. Many African countries are expected to mobilize some funds to support economic growth as the Continental Free Trade Agreement takes off next year. And the new program, according to the Finance Minister, is perfect intervention to spare economic growth. And, you know, we launched the uh, Ghana Cares of Our Tampa program um, so that we immediately get on the path of recovery. But as you see from the composite index, um, even though we had projected a 0.9% growth from 6.8, um, now we are quite sure that we'll be able to do about 2%. That is double what, what, what we started. Uh, inflation is being kept, our reserves uh, in a strong position. Um, so we're really feeling good uh, about a, a much faster recovery than we otherwise thought. Yeah. The continental free trade agreement, you did indicate that you need the private sector support. Uh, now, yeah. on the part of government, how far have we got into when it comes to implementation? Well, I mean, as you know, I mean, officially it will be launched in January next year. Um, it's going to take some doing, you know, to, to sort of mobilize our risk. But I think for us, the clarity is that it has given us a mandate um, for using Ghana as a regional and continental hub, uh, given that the headquarters is here. Um, so the Obatampa program of Ghana Cares is looking at 70 billion of partnership with the private sector so that we can support um, Ghana being a financial services center, petroleum, logistics, education, etc., um, and manufacturing. And, and that's where we are. I, I think we're going to get um, uh, the benefit of, of being, you know, um, getting out of the blocks early. And, and that's an excitement for, for the future. All right, we've got a full bulletin of business news coming up at the top of the hour in the marketplace, including the latest inflation rate that's for the month of October, pegged at 10.1%. Up next, though, is sports. Stay tuned. <laughs> Good afternoon, welcome to Showbiz here on Journey. Today, now musician Wallasi at the weekend honored legendary music producer Hammer at this year's edition of his concert, Walla Fest. Wallasi, one of Ghana's finest performers, had a simple but thoughtful accession to make on the night to pay a glowing tribute to the man whose support and contribution uh, to his music uh, has been constant and profound. Make you better. Be you now. So, how are your hand, your heart, and your head? We catch you, we make you catch there. We, we too, I can't listen. We what? I catch me, I make a catch where I be. It has made me who I am, basically. That's why I'm, that's why I'm honoring them. Um, it's not an award because I can't give an award to a person musically. I'm not a music to critique. But they've honored me. I have learned from them. I have listened to them. And I have become who I am now because of them. There are a lot of other people, but we could only make five because of money. Um, and these are the five ones that we took. So next year, we'll probably do more. And yeah, that's... that's, that's <laughs> Your music influence.